An X-ray is a waveform that's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's similar to radio waves, microwave waves, and even the waves that make up visible light. Each of these has a specific wavelength, which gives it unique characteristics. A unique characteristic of X-rays is that it's able to penetrate human body tissue, but is also largely absorbed by denser tissues. So how do X-rays create an image that we can see? First off, an X-ray source is aimed at a patient's body. A detector on the other side of the patient can then pick up the X-rays as they're passed through the body tissue or are partially absorbed. Using computer programming, the detected X-rays can then be put into an image. Denser tissues, such as bone, appear white as less X-rays have passed through. Less dense tissue, such as air in the lungs, appear black as X-rays are more able to pass through. Less dense than bone is fluid, which will appear slightly less white than bone. Less dense than fluid is soft tissue, which therefore appears slightly less white than fluid. Different pathologies will therefore show up as different densities on the chest x-ray. For example, a pneumothorax has air in the pleural space where it shouldn't be, so it will appear black. And a lung tumour will show as an area of increased tissue density in the lung, so it will appear whiter than the surrounding air. Since x-rays are a form of ionising radiation, it's important to be aware that they can damage the DNA in human cells, and therefore slightly increase the risk of developing cancers. A single chest x-ray gives the human body the equivalent of three days background radiation. When interpreting a chest x-ray, there's always three steps. Step one is to check patient demographics. It's best practice to use free identification points to make sure you get the right patient. We also need to check the time and date of the image to make sure we're using the right image for that patient. Step two is to assess the image quality using the mnemonic RIPE rotation, inspiration, projection, exposure. Firstly, rotation. This chest x-ray is not rotated, and we can tell that because the medial tip of each clavicle is equidistant from the spinous process. A non-rotated chest x-ray will also show all the vertebrae stacked up neatly in a vertical line. If a patient's upper body is twisted or leaning, the corresponding chest x-ray will appear rotated. This can make the trachea appear deviated, when it might not be. Next is inspiration. The patient must take an adequately deep breath in when the chest x-ray is being taken. This allows us to visualise more of the lungs. If not, a lot of the lung field is missed. We can tell if there's adequate inspiration by identifying where the midclavicular line meets the diaphragm. The anterior portion of rib 5, 6 or 7 should cross the line in an image with adequate inspiration. Less than rib 5 means there's hypo expansion. More than rib 7 means hyper expansion. Projection refers to whether the patient is facing the x-ray source or has their back facing it. This is described as anterior posterior or posterior anterior. Ideally, a chest x-ray should always be PA, posterior anterior. This is important as AP films can make the heart appear enlarged. Exposure refers to how much x-ray has been allowed to pass through the chest, similar to exposure in a camera. Too much exposure will create an image that's too dark, whilst an underexposed image will be too light. An adequately exposed chest x-ray will have visible vertebrae behind the heart and also a left hemidiaphragm that's visible up to the edge of the spine. As part of checking exposure, I also think it's a good idea to check that all of the patient's chest has been exposed to x-rays, i.e. can I see the whole chest from top to bottom, left to right. Step 3 is to use another mnemonic. This allows us to systematically check all parts of the x-ray image. This stands for airway, breathing, cardiac, diaphragm, and everything else. Airway refers to the trachea, left and right main bronchi, and the hyla regions. The trachea should be central and the hyla regions symmetrical in size. This image shows a trachea that is deviated to the right, in this case caused by a large pleural effusion. 
We can tell it's a pleural effusion because it has a meniscus, where the fluid level appears as a curve. The trachea can be pushed by an area of increased pressure, for example, a pneumothorax or a pleural effusion. In or it can be pulled by an area of decreased pressure, usually a lobe collapse. Hyla regions can be unilaterally enlarged, for example in cancers, or bilaterally enlarged, like in this chest x-ray, often associated with sarcoidosis. B, for breathing, refers to the lungs. The lungs on the chest x-ray should appear blacker than the surrounding tissue and should be mostly symmetrical in density. When describing areas of the lungs, we split them into upper, middle and lower zones. These zones don't directly correlate with the anatomical lobes of the lungs, which are harder to identify in the chest x-ray. The right lung has three lobes, superior, middle and inferior, whilst the left lung has just two, superior and inferior, with a small section called the lingula. When assessing the lungs on a chest x-ray, we need to compare the three zones from left to right, checking for any asymmetries that could be caused by pathology. The lung should have normal markings bilaterally, without any areas of increased density, excluding normal anatomy. Normal lung markings should also be visible up to the edge of the lung field to exclude a pneumothorax. We then need to check that the costophrenic angles are clear. Blunting of the costophrenic angles could represent a pleural effusion or consolidation. Next, check the surrounding pleura for any thickening. This could be a result of asbestos exposure or cancer. Let's have a look at some chest x-rays with abnormalities in B, breathing. This patient has a large focal area of increased density in the right lower zone. This is a right-sided pneumonia. Notice how there's asymmetry between the left and right lower zones because of the opacity. When the area of increased density is caused by fluid in the alveolar airspace, we call this consolidation. This patient has a large area of reduced density, or absent lung markings, in the right lower, middle and upper zones laterally. This is a pneumothorax. The trachea here is still central. But remember, sometimes in a pneumothorax, it can be pushed away. This patient has a large focal area of increased density in the medial left upper and middle zones. This is a lung cancer. Notice here how the trachea has been pushed to the right, probably due to the lung mass taking up space in the chest. Here is a large focal area of increased density in the medial left lower and middle zones. This particular chest x-ray shows the classic sail sign, which represents a left lower lobe collapse. Any lung lobe can collapse, but typically only the collapse of a left lower lobe will cause this sail sign. Also notice here how the trachea and heart have been pulled towards the side of the collapsed lobe. This image shows bilateral reticular nodular shadowing throughout all three zones. This x-ray belongs to a patient with COVID-19 pneumonitis. COVID typically causes chest x-ray changes from day 10 of illness in more severe cases. Consolidation is usually bilateral and predominantly peripheral and in lower zones. Cardiac refers to the heart. Here, we should check the heart borders are clearly visible. Heart borders can be obscured by underlying lung pathology, such as consolidation, a tumour or pulmonary edema. The aortic knuckle should also be clear and not enlarged. An enlarged aortic knuckle could represent an aortic dissection, which would be a surgical emergency. We then need to check the heart size by measuring the cardiothoracic ratio. To do this, we divide the heart width by the thorax width. If this is over 0.5 on a PA, or posterior anterior projected film, the patient has cardiomegaly. This patient has cardiomegaly. They also have alveolar edema, which is fluid in the alveoli. Interstitial edema 
is excess fluid in the lung tissue itself and is often represented by thin horizontal lines on the edge of the lung fields. These are also known as curly B lines and are quite tricky to see. When you check the costophrenic angles, you'll notice that they are not clear and they also have a meniscus line. This patient has bilateral pleural effusions. Finally, the circular opacities in the upper medial zones are caused by dilated upper lobe vessels. These five findings together are classic of heart failure on a chest x-ray. But do remember, a patient doesn't need to have all five signs to be diagnosed with heart failure. D is for diaphragm. On the chest x-ray, they should be dome-shaped, with the right sitting slightly higher than the left. Check the diaphragms are not flattened. Air in the stomach is a normal finding under the left hemidiaphragm, but there shouldn't be air under the right hemidiaphragm. This patient's diaphragm has been flattened downwards. This is an example of hyperexpansion in a patient with COPD. Notice how the rib spaces are larger than normal, caused by hyperexpansion of the rib cage. This patient has air under their right hemidiaphragm. This is known as a pneumoperitoneum and could be caused by intestinal perforation and therefore could also be a surgical emergency. To finish off our chest x-ray interpretation, we also need to check everything else. This includes bones for any fractures, soft tissues for things like surgical emphysema, which is air in the soft tissue, tubes, for example, nasogastric tubes or endotracheal tubes, and finally, review areas. Review areas are a reminder to check the lung field behind the heart and diaphragm, and also to double check the lung apices and edges. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, then feel free to check out my full video tutorial series on chest x-rays. The link is in the description. I'd also hugely appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot, and it means that you can see the rest of my educational videos that I'll be uploading in the near future. Thanks and see you next time.